All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Georgina Arias. I'm with UCSF Transportation. I'm the Transportation Demand Manager. And my job here is just to assist people with their commutes and hopefully get them out of their car, uh, try something more sustainable, something that'll save you time and money. So today we're here to talk about Share a Ride to Win. It's our new carpool incentive. And we're trying to get more people out of their, their drive alone cars um, to hopefully share the car, get more people in the car, um, to get you into the HOV lane and cut down on your costs. I'm also joined by Alex Temkin and I'll introduce him in just a bit. What are the benefits of sharing the ride? So you can share a ride either as a carpool or a van pool or any number of ways. Um, but today we're really gonna focus on carpooling. Many people enjoy the comfort of riding in a car as opposed to being on a bus or BART or, um, or one of the larger van pool vehicles. It is a faster trip in the HOV or the express lane if there happens to be one of those along your route. There are free or discounted tolls in express lanes and crossing bridges. Uh, carpooling allows you to share the commuting costs, be that the bridge toll or, or gas, which is very high right now, um, or parking. You and your fellow passengers or your driver can arrive a little less stressed and ready to work. Or if you're on your way home, arrive less stressed, wound down a bit so you can relax at home. My Commute is a system that we have at UCSF that allows you to match with other carpoolers specifically at UCSF. So this is just for the UCSF community. Everyone with an at UCSF email address can log into this system um, and take a look at their, their commute trip and see what other options might be available for them. We ask that you start at mycommute.ucsf.edu um, to register for the first time. It's a single sign-on um, to set up your profile and see what matches you may have. This will get you matched with existing carpools based on your starting and end location. A little bit about the incentive, it's running now. So it started this week, April 18th through the end of May. Every time you do a carpool trip and log your trip using my commute, this is considered a raffle entry for a $25 gift card. We choose 20 winners weekly um, and you're allowed to win up to $75. So you can win three times. How do you participate? Log on to my commute, match with UCSF colleagues interested in carpooling. Then give the ride a try, carpool to work or home from work. Then log into my commute and log your trip. Let us know that you took a carpool trip. Now I'd like to introduce you to Alex Temkin. He'll um, be able to walk you through my commute, what your profile looks like and um, how to match up. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And hello, everybody. Uh, thanks, Regina. My name is Alex Temkin. I'm the lead manager of client success and implementations at Ride Amigos, which is the uh, software company that provides the software for my commute. Uh, and uh, as she mentioned, I'm going to go through basically the registration process right now, uh, show you how to sign into the site, uh, how to set up your profile, and then, uh, as mentioned, right, also show you how to find matches in the system. So I will now share my screen, which hopefully this works on the first try. Let's see. All right, I think we're I think we're good. Cool, excellent. So this is the uh, homepage. Uh, it's at mycommute.ucsf.edu. This is where you're gonna first go to log in. Uh, very cool thing about it is that we are integrated with UCSF's uh, single sign-in system. So to log in, all you need to do is just hit the login button here, uh, click through the UCSF My Access link, uh, entering your standard university credentials, and it will log you directly into the site. Um, the first time you log in, you're going to see this interface right here. Uh, this is to just get a little more information about you and make sure that you're, uh, you know, matching with the right people in the right programs. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is select the uh, campus which you most often go to. Uh, this is kind of going to be your home profile area. So for the sake of this demo, I will select Mission Bay. Um, cool. And then next, you're also going to want to select the uh, position that most uh, correctly identifies you. So are you the staff, faculty, position, student? Uh, I'm going to go with staff here. Excellent. And once you do that, you just hit submit and it, gonna bring, it brings you to your uh, user dashboard. So when you're in the user dashboard, you're going to see this section right here uh, asking you uh, if you're ready to improve your commute. Uh, if the answer is yes, which hopefully it is, 
uh, you want to hit this let's go button and this is what's going to bring up the prompt to save your favorite commute in the system, which is basically the basis for finding carpool matches and also letting other carpool matches find you. Uh, so first thing you want to do is just enter in your starting address. So I'm just going to enter in a Vallejo address here and do some Northeast Bay. Sorry, I got to activate my keyboard there. Uh, Northeast Bay matching. There we go. And then I will do, uh, see if I can get the Mission Bay campus here. There we go. Yeah, that's another thing too, is like we do have the uh, UCSF location saved in the system. So you can type in the campus and it should show up as a uh, searchable destination. Next, what you're gonna do is set your regular commuting time. Uh, so if this is your regular commute, say you go to campus at about uh, 9.45 each day, you leave at about 5.45. Uh, you can select those options. Uh, you can also select the days you go to campus each week. So for instance, if I'm a Monday, Wednesday, Friday commuter, I can select these. Uh, next, you can share your carpool interest. Um, so if you don't have a car, you can make yourself a passenger only. Uh, if you only feel like driving, you don't like being a passenger, maybe you get car sick, whatever it may be. Uh, you can select driver only, only, or if you're indifferent, uh, you can be driver or passenger. If you're close enough to bike to campus as well, we do have a bike pool option as well. And then very soon we will also have transit pool and walking pool options. So uh, for people who might take transit and want to uh, find someone to ride with, uh, or for someone who just wants to walk to campus with another uh, staff member, student, whatever it may be, uh, there is that option. There will be that option as well very soon within the next couple of weeks here. Um, lastly, you can choose to share it uh, with you, you share your trip with anyone. So if you have specific gender preferences or non-binary preferences, whatever it may be, uh, you can choose to do so. However, you are not required to uh, make a selection in this uh, in this area. So once you save your favorite trip, it's going to get saved in the My Commute section of your user dashboard, and you are going to see uh, your various transportations pop up. So as you can see, I have 20 possible carpool options to choose from uh, from this Vallejo location, which is very cool, and a couple of van pool options as well. So a uh, lot of very cool stuff to do. Uh, and I'll open up our trip planner now to show you what that looks like. So when you're in the carpool section, uh, it will show you, you can uh, filter by riders or drivers. So for instance, I have 20 rider options. So there are more people looking for a ride uh, rather than uh, posting a ride. But for instance, right, say I don't have a car, I want to find someone to drive with. Uh, you can do these options as well. So um, we'll just go through the matches here. I see this person matches. Uh, I'll, I'll try and find someone who might have a better time match. Uh, so let's see here. So roughly this person right here uh, has a similar schedule to what I do. They work five days a week, even though I only work three. Um, a little bit out of the way, but uh, as, as just an example here, what I can do is I can open up the commute. I can see roughly where the person is coming from and where we're going to. Uh, so we have a fairly similar commute. Looks like uh, Stephanie is right nearby. And then we're both going in generally the same direction here to uh, the uh, Mission Bay campus. So if this person seems like someone I would be interested in carpooling with, uh, you can hit this connect button. I can see also as well that Stephanie in this case is a staff member. Uh, so I can hit this connect button and send a message saying something along the lines of like, hey, we have a similar route. We should carpool or something more creative than what I'm coming up with on the fly here. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to hit send because this is a real user and they don't want to uh, create any false carpool matches. But what you would do in this instance is hit send. And what that does is that sends an email directly to that user. Uh, if the user is interested and able to carpool, they will respond to you directly via email. And then you can coordinate offsite, uh, share you know, phone numbers, contacts, whatever it may be. Um, one thing to mention too, for privacy purposes, we do not share your exact location with anyone uh, on the trip planner. We share an approximate location. So for instance, right here, I have 1001 Fairgrounds Drive in Vallejo as my address. So I can see that, but if someone saw me as a carpool match, uh, they would just see that I am in that general vicinity. Uh, it is on you, the user, to share any uh, personal information uh, with the uh, carpool match. Um, very cool thing about the trip planner as well is that we do have some custom maps app layers uh, on the site that are unique to my commute. Uh, so for instance, if you want to find the UCSF shuttle stops, you can toggle that map layer on and off. Uh, you can toggle campus buildings on and off, uh, which let me see if I can find some examples here, or maybe not. <laughs> Sorry. I'm... I think you have to zoom in a bit. I, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me, let me try and find my uh, geographic options here. Um... 
anyways, they should be showing. I don't know. Um, oh, I see. I don't have it toggled on. That's why. Let's see. Interesting. All right. Well, they should be showing. If I'm looking at the wrong thing, that may be why, uh, but we will make sure we get that resolved. Anyways, though, we do have, as I said, kind of the custom uh, map layers here. We have bike facilities as well. We have those ones showing up. Uh, and yeah, so as I said, it's a very unique uh, trip planning situation. Uh, and uh, as I said, it's very much customized and enclosed to just UCSF members, right? There are no members of the general public on this. You do have to have UCSF credentials to sign in. So anyone on this site uh, is someone affiliated with the university. Cool. So once you have found your car, uh, your carpool match, and you've started logging or taking carpool trips, uh, as Georgina mentioned, right? You guys are doing an incentive uh, where you can be rewarded for logging your carpool, taking carpool trips, and logging them in the system. And the way to do that is through your commute calendar here. Uh, so it's a very simple process. So say for instance, I I took a carpool trip last Tuesday. Uh, I would select the day. Uh, I would select the time I left for campus. So I'll say I left at nine. I say I returned at five thirty. Uh, if I did a one way trip, by the way, I could do so I could mark that by doing no return trip. Um, and what that does is it logs only one trip, as you can see here. However, if you do a round trip, which is kind of just the default uh, for our system, you can just log the uh, time you left time you came back the one way distance of your trip. Uh, so I'll say it was about 10 miles and then the mode as well, which we will select as carpool. And then what I will do here is I will log these two trips. So I've now logged a round trip in the system, which has created basically two entries to win, uh, one for each way uh, of the uh, trip. And then it has also generated statistics uh, for you. So we have um, we have the dollar saved amount, which is basically the dollar save the cost uh, that you've saved versus driving alone. So for instance, if you do this round trip, uh, if you do this round trip trip. Uh, you will save roughly about $7.14 versus uh, driving on your own. Uh, you can see your non S single occupancy vehicle tra travel distance, the amount of uh, the approximate amount of carbon dioxide you've saved. And if you are an active commuter, so if you do biking or walking, you can actually uh, calculate roughly the number of calories you've burned as well through your uh, commuting methods. Uh, and then as I said, pretty much uh, it in terms of uh, the interaction you need to, do, need to do to be entered, just log your trips. And uh, I believe winners will be announced uh, with fair frequency. So uh, Georgina, anything else you would like me to highlight while we uh, have this up? Um, well, I just wanted to let people know, let's say you, you carpool today, you have up to two weeks to log your trip. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do it right away or the same day. You, you have a few days to, to get your information in. Yep, great point. Um, I do see a couple questions here. Uh, first off, what do we do if we can't find a match? Uh, ultimately, right, hopefully you do find a match, uh, but ultimately it is dependent on, uh, on who is available nearby. Uh, so if you are in an area that perhaps fewer people are traveling from, you may have a harder time finding matches. Uh, a recommendation that would be to maybe slightly change your, uh, your initial starting area. Uh, so our system should match based on your start and end location. So if you alter the starting location to somewhere nearby that's not too far out of the way, it may change the results you see. But as I said, ultimately, right, you know, the matching system depends on having uh, engaged users who are who are open to carpooling. Um, good question, though. Uh, next one I see here is how do we figure out the cost of commuting before contacting the person uh, offering the ride? Um, that is something you'll kind of need to figure out uh, with the person directly. Uh, you know, they may have a... Uh, they may have their own preferences for how to share the money. Uh, I believe AAA does have an average cost per mile estimate uh, you can reference as well. So if you know that you're going to be carpooling roughly 20 miles, you can figure out what that kind of average cost per mile is, multiply it by 20, uh, divide by two, and or you know three, depending on how many people you have in your carpool. Uh, and uh, that would be a good way to figure out the cost. So it's going to be different for everyone. There is no uniform way. Uh, we don't handle costs through the site. Uh, carpooling, you know, from our perspective, is a is a, a free service provided. However, right, if there is a monetary arrangement you want to work out with the driver, uh, that's certainly certainly up to you. Um, and then last question I see here is once you find a match, are you supposed to give your address? Uh, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable giving your address to someone you match with on the site, you can pick a public location, say if there's a nearby mall with a parking lot or something that you can walk to, or if you wanna just give an intersection nearby, uh, 
that is entirely up to you. As mentioned, our system will not share your address with the carpool match. Uh, it is entirely on you to share that information. So uh, if it is a privacy concern of yours, uh, it's not gonna be shared by us, but you are able to do so. And you are very welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you, Alex. I'm gonna share my screen again. I will stop sharing mine then. There you go. And as a little reminder, so the carpool program, um, the carpool has incentive has begun. It's gonna go through the end of May. Every time you take a carpool trip and log that in my commute, you're entered into a raffle for a $25 gift card. Um, you will get that via email and you can actually choose what type of gift card you would like. There's a long list of gift cards to choose from, or you can donate that money to a charity. 20 winners are selected weekly. So every, you know, there are six weeks, there are going to be a lot of winners. Um, and we thank you very much. Um, if you have any other questions, put them in the chat and we'll get to them. If not, you can email us transportation at ucsf.edu. And to get to my commute, just go into your browser and type mycommute.ucsf.edu. You can also get to that from, from the transportation website. If you go to, to alternatives and then carpool, you'll find all that information posted there. This video will also be posted on the carpool page. So we're gonna stay on for about two or three more minutes to see if any other questions come through. All right, everyone. Well, good luck. I hope you enjoy carpooling and I hope you're all winners. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your lunch.